when people are making calls on buying the right property, and a lot of people want to get into investments, there are certain types of investments simply from a mortgage side that you can't get into. I mean, if you want to go buy a five to uh, more than four units, five or more, mm-hmm. you can't just go finance that the same way you can finance four or less. Um, does that drive a lot of people to purchasing duplexes? It does. And triplexes and. Well, yeah, because the, the uh, like you said, the financing options. There's more of them, and so uh, when you're out there looking, not everybody has. You, you usually need more cash to buy a five or more uh, building, but you can actually buy um, duplexes, the fourplexes, with with kind of standard financing. If it's owner occupied, you can do it with three and a half percent down. Yeah, I mean, FHA that's loan. FHA loan. Uh, I've done some with military guys who are doing this uh, VA loan, zero percent down. Uh, but yeah, for the standard investor, it's you know about twenty percent down, and twenty percent down on a you know duplex to a fourplex is significantly cheaper than your six unit building apartment buildings all the way up to forty fifty unit apartment buildings. Certainly, and they're they're underwritten completely differently. So when somebody wants to go and the, what their first step, I suppose, you know whether if they're going to go look at a property and they're thinking in their head two units, and really we're just talking about like, you know, small apartment buildings, two unit apartment building, mm-hmm. three unit, four unit, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes. What's that first step that they should really kind of understand about, I guess, deciding if they want to live there or not? Th- that's the hugest one. Yeah. If it's an owner-occupied investment, changes the game, completely different. Uh, financing's different. Um, we're trying to look for something that they are happy with as the investment and also happy to live in for a little while too. Uh, but if it's a standard uh, investor looking for it, then they're usually just more numbers driven. They want something that's just going to uh, going to pencil out every month and make the cash flow that they're looking for. And so when people start looking at that, I mean, again, we, I was just talking with Matt about the emotional kind of the, the home buying versus the investment side, the pure economics of it. And there's a difference there. There is. And, and it's and it's tough for that buyer uh, sometimes to get, give up what they feel like they want in their in the home. A lot of times the first time people, uh, if, if they're buying a, a duplex, because duplexes are not going to have the t- same type of layout that you're trying to think of in for a standard home. Uh, but when you get over that hurdle and realize that this is a great investment potential, uh, that they, they usually, it's, it, usually I like to think about like they're buying an apartment for themselves. Like what, what can you live with for a year or so uh, as an investment? Yeah. And so when you start going down that road, what are some of the biggest questions you're asking people? How do, uh, oh, that I'm asking, uh, what's their, t- what's their time frames? How long do they want to commit to this investment as an owner occupied? Uh, what type of rate of return? Are we trying to just lower their monthly expenses? So they might not make positive cash flow every month if they're occupying it, but maybe they're only paying a hundred, 200 bucks a month to live there. So, mm-hmm. uh, what, what is their ultimate financial goal when they buy it? Uh, is still the main driving factor. And that's going to really, I guess, change the way you're creating an offer around something. Yeah. And the, well, when we create offers, especially on duplexes, because if it's an owner-occupied duplex, we can actually get sometimes better financing because we can, we can use the other unit's income towards our buyer's income to maybe help them qualify for something, uh, maybe a little more expensive or get a better rate. Um, and But when we're pricing our offers, we're trying to look at the rate of return. We're trying to see, is this property uh, have a fair market rent? Uh, and is the rate of return that they're trying to sell it at reasonable? If you know, if, if it's only a one percent rate of return, most investors aren't going to go for it. They they want something that is going to be in the five, six, seven percent uh, rate of return range. So when we're putting our offer together, if it seems like it's priced too high based off of their off of the rents they're receiving, we we show that we we write a letter down. We put out financials back to the seller, going these these don't look. Like they make sense. Like we are asking too much money, and you as an investor, would you buy this property? Mm-hmm. Just because you want a bunch of money for it doesn't necessarily mean anybody's going to buy it. Right. Jared Frazier joins us with the Remax on the Lake. Uh, so, Jared, when you have somebody buy a property like this and the numbers work out, and now you're kind of a you are a homeowner and a landlord, potentially if it's your first time, mm-hmm. both of these for the first time. How did somebody like you come in and maybe help them go through that process? Well, the the biggest thing we do is help them on uh, maintenance, leasing, uh, strategy, and plan. Uh, you know, we're not a management company, but we we can set them up with one if, if they're looking for full on management. But a lot of these first time buyers, they want to do it themselves or do as much as they can uh, for themselves. So we have a lot of questions we'll ask. You know, what are you interested in doing? Some of the repairs? Are you interested in doing the the bookkeeping or billing? Uh, find out what they want to do. 
help them set that up, and then whatever they don't want to do, find somebody for that so that they feel comfortable in managing this property. The faster that they are successful, the more likely they're going to buy another property in the future, and that, that's our ultimate goal is to keep them on this rental property you know, growing spree. Sure. And so that really becomes the, I guess, the in some ways, the blueprint to being successful in this, right? Mm-hmm. Understanding if you're going to live there or not, understanding how the finances work, and then really realizing that it's going to take some effort either on your own or hired help in order to run the building in some ways. Yeah, essentially you're buying a business. You're buying the business of renting to tenants. Yeah, and your and office space is that building. And your office space is that building, yeah. And you need to figure out who your clientele is. Is it, Does this building apply, uh, you know, really uh, go to the younger demographic, the middle-aged demographic? You know, where did you buy it? Where is it located? How do you attract those people? What type of furn- uh, you know, what type of uh, condition the unit is in? Are you going to keep it that way? Are we going to make it nicer? Uh, and, and that's all those same things that you need to you need to think about when you're trying to get tenants who are going to pay the higher rent. Mm -hmm. Now, once you decide that maybe you're done with this type of property, I suppose there's two options if you're going to move out, right? You can sell it or keep or rent both. Mm-hmm. What are what are sales like on duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes uh, in the area right now? As as you know, obviously the current real estate market is insane. Uh, they they are they're not as hot as you know the regular residential market, which they usually never are, but they are picking up. Uh, they, there is a demand for housing. Uh, there was a point in time in like 2004, 2005 that they were flying. I mean, you couldn't yeah, any anything with a for sale sign on it was selling basically. That's true. Uh, and um, and yeah, so when we're getting the property ready, we need to figure out you know are we at current market value of rents? So sometimes it's a long process. I, I might get contacted uh, and then we end up not listing the property for another six months because we want that tenant cycle to change so we can get a higher paying rent in there. Maybe do some repairs, fix it up. Uh, and that's what we evaluate. We try to see, are you currently at fair market rent? Uh, are you below fair market rent? Because the more money you can show that that property produces, the more money you're going to get when you sell the property. And so as that starts to, so there's an element, I guess, of preparing it for sale in that way. Yeah, so that's, that's one of the, you know, we're obviously going to go through, check the condition. Uh, I personally like to let the tenants know that the sale, sometimes you see this a lot in the market where they don't let the tenants know that the property's uh, being sold. And I think it really slows down a potential buyer. Uh, you're also limiting yourself to not nobody owner occupied is going to buy that property because if they can't see inside, they're not going to put an offer in on the place. Uh, they just don't bother with it. So working with the tenants, trying to figure out a schedule of when we can show it, so we're not too intrusive into their life. You know, we don't want people showing up every day. And probably helping them realize this doesn't mean they're going to get the boot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Most of the people aren't. And you can't just get the boot. I mean, uh, if you're on a lease, you... Washington state law means you're you're staying on that lease. If you're not on, if you're month to month, then you're still on a month to month lease, and that could end at at, at another month. Most buyers aren't kicking out the people uh, right away if they're paying good rent. Uh, so the more informed the tenants are, uh, usually the more successful the transaction is when they go to sell. Makes a lot of sense. Jared Frazier joins us. Jared, uh, in the next minute, I mean, help me understand maybe how you are pricing these properties to sell. Because if they're not as hot as the residential market, you maybe aren't seeing 20 or 30 offers on a triplex right now. Co- correct. So we're looking at uh, comparable properties. So sometimes, like we said, that, that can be tough with you know if it's not selling enough. But we're also looking at uh, its its cap rate, its re- rate of return. How much month, how much uh, income is it making a month minus the expenses, uh, and from there we can do a calculation that will give us a, a value of the property based off of that. We then compare it to properties in the area, and if that is within a you know within a reasonable range of, of anything that's comparable, uh, then that's usually where you go for. Uh, but sometimes you'll see properties where it just doesn't make sense. The, either the cap rate is too low, we think we can get more rent. Uh, so it, it, it's kind of tough, but we do. We have to look at some residential standard home sales. We look at other multifamily sales. We do look at some bigger unit sales and what kind of we can do price per unit. We can do price per square foot. There's multiple different ways we can come up with a fair market value. Yeah, it seems a little bit different than when you have 500 houses in a neighborhood and X amount of sold. Yeah, just not as many of these. There's, there's not yeah, there's not not as many of them are selling, and you know they're not being sold every single day. So yeah, you have to kind of look. Uh, maybe you look a little broader uh, in in the in the region, kind of what, you know what what is the common trend, what is the common rate of return, and that's usually the best way to judge is just what's the common you know percentage of of interest rate that you're getting back on return. 